Hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome back to the OTH vlog. I uh, hope you all had a great weekend. I know I sure did enjoy the, a lot of the weather we had coming in. It was awesome to get out there, especially on Friday. I had some pretty good wind and it was a lot of fun just getting out to the beach here in Huntington. Um, for those of you who weren't able to get out, the time will come soon enough. Don't worry, we will be done with this. May 15th is the day we can get back out on the beach and we're beyond excited for that. So in the meantime, for those of you who are just eager to get out there and have, want something to look forward to, today we're going to talk about something that's huge in our area, and that is foiling. And in today's video, I'm just going to discuss uh, getting into foiling, uh, things to look for for a first board setup, and a little bit of tips in getting you riding for the first time. So let's just start off with board choice. When you're getting into foiling, you want to have something that's going to allow you to ride above the surface of the water with ease uh, when you're first learning your first couple rides. And something that will help with that is a board with higher volume, such as the pace that I have behind me here. That higher volume board is going to give you the float that you want at slower speeds before the board is up on foil. So while you're riding, it's going to feel a little bit more familiar. It's not going to feel as, as wonky when you're going and getting your speed starting to increase when the board is just resting on top of the water. And that's going to help out quite a bit. Now the downfalls to having a higher volume board for some beginners is that the board is sometimes a little difficult to get up on its side to put on your feet. It can feel a little cumbersome because of all the float that it has. Whereas something like our free board back here might be a little bit easier to get control of and sink the board to your feet, but it doesn't give you that float when you're starting to do your slow rides, trying to get up and riding going downwind. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, and this is, there's two schools of thought on mast height. So in mast heights, um, for example, Slingshot, they have a ton of different mast heights all the way down to like, I think it's barely a foot and a half uh, in size. And my thought on the super short mast is, yes, it's going to help out for keeping you to the water, but you're going to outgrow it very quickly. Um, with that short mast height, what I've seen from students and from people who ride in the, uh, in the past is that, yeah, you can get up and going, but they porpoise very easily because you only have this much clearance from the bottom water and typically it's a little choppy. So the board will kind of pop, pop, pop. And then when they do learn to ride it, they're just keeping the board to the water the entire time, which yes, the foil is engaging, but you're not learning how to keep your balance on the mast. So, I'm a firm believer of using a medium sized mast. For example, using a 75 centimeter mast for students and for people who are just starting to learn. And that allows them to feel comfortable because they're not getting very high off the water when you're starting to get up on foil. And you have still a little bit of time to be able to control your height off the water before porpoising out with a short mast. So that's just my, my personal take on teaching people how to ride foils and when getting into foils. Because also a, a medium sized mast, you can keep around. You can use that for shallow water if you're going to some other places, especially if you're going to the East Coast, or uh, you can use it for you know other different setups for different types of wings and kind of use it to your advantage. Whereas short mast, you see those are all over the place. People are trying to get rid of those because they don't really do much for them later on in their riding. As a beginner, you're gonna want something that is stable and comfortable at riding at slow speed. So I have two wings here. Here I have our carve and I have our free ride. Um, let's start off with the free ride. I typically use this for uh, all of our lessons. Uh, it's just a durable wing. It's made out of a carbon compound, so it's pretty uh, resistant to chips and dings, especially as a beginner when you're walking out. The board might get kind of tossed around in the shallow water and it might get uh, scratched. So these uh, carbon compounds, really durable. You can bang on this thing and it's not going to chip it or ding it or anything like that, causing any issues while riding. The other nice thing is the little winglets at the ends make for a very... Um, controlled ride. It's like having fins on the bottom of your board so the foil likes to stay in position and tack right along. It's a kind of a familiar feeling coming from a board with fins and its lift is relatively moderate. So while you're up and going, you're not going to feel a ton of pressure trying to push you up out of the water, but also it's not a wing that needs to be ridden at very high speeds to get you up and riding. So a great beginner to intermediate to all around wing. Uh, a lot of fun. I, I jump with this one. It's just, just all around good feel and uh, something to get yourself into foiling. Now, another recommendation I can make if you want to go into the carbon wings with the Duotone lineup is our uh, carve 
Now the carve is, you can see a lot more surface area. When you add that surface area, you're gonna get something that's gonna help you ride at slower speeds. So when you're learning your tacks and jibes and stuff, you don't have to come into a lot of speed with this guy. And also with the bigger surface areas, you can ride these in lower winds and it makes it for a little bit easier for getting up and going when the wind is just right there at the edge. So this is my personal favorite setup uh, is the uh, carve with a 90 centimeter mast and I actually love riding it on the freeboard here behind me. Um, so that's a little thing to look at for the wings is giving yourself that little bit of surface area. So now that we've talked about equipment, we can kind of start talking about riding. Um, so again, usually what I'll have my students set up on is the pace here, 75 centimeter mast with the uh, free ride foil. Now, when we're getting up and going, I'm just gonna give you a couple tips because I could really dive into this and go into a lot of detail, but here's the big main ones. You're gonna to wanna to start off on a day where there's moderate wind. Uh, for us, anywhere 15 to 18, because you wanna have fairly good kite control. You don't have to worry about uh, doing light wind stuff. And yes, foiling is great in the light wind, but it takes time to learn that skill set to get you comfortable with light wind. So we're gonna make it where we just have to worry about the board. So we're gonna give ourselves some decent wind with a decent sized kite, so that way you have all the power that, you're, that you need to help you feel comfortable. Um, when we're out there getting the board on your feet, the best advice I can give you is getting the board to rest on its side like I have it here. If the board lays flat in the water, the first time you try to pull that thing up, that mast and wing underneath the board provides a lot of resistance and can feel kind of awkward trying to pull it up on its side. So if you walk to the water with the board on its side like this and start body dragging with it already on its side, it's gonna be much easier to handle in keeping the board out in front of you. Now, for getting the board on our feet and keeping it on that side, what I say is when you put your feet into the straps here, is to put your foot in and then tilt your toes up. And that's going to keep the board up on its side by bringing those toes up and kind of almost facing them towards you in the water. Now, with riding, uh, you're gonna wanna start slow and utilizing the lift of the kite to help you stay balanced on top of the board. If you go at this like a typical board start for a twin tip and you do a really aggressive dive, these boards pick up speed very quickly and you're gonna come flying out and more than likely what's gonna happen is the board is gonna porpoise on you, meaning coming up and out of the water. So you're gonna wanna start off very gradual, easing yourself into the power, utilizing a lot of the kite coming down, but mainly coming back up to kind of get you up over top of the board so you can start riding a very gradually downwind. Um, and with these boards, it really surprises people how much weight you need to bring over your front leg. Most of your weight when riding should be over the front of the board. It's totally opposite from our twin tips where we're on our back foot. With the foil, you're keeping a lot of your weight over the front to manage the lift on the wing. The wings are made to lift, okay? It seems very counterintuitive when you get out there. You would think you need to put weight on the back foot to, get, to come out of the water. That is not the case. We are just managing uh, the lift by keeping weight on the front foot and alleviating weight from the front foot to have it raised, not putting weight to the back foot. And we can set the foils up in different ways to make it where you have more back foot pressure or front foot pressure. But as a beginner, we're gonna utilize a lot of weight on the front foot to keep the board down until we start understanding that balance. So a general recap of board choices and very, very beginner-esque um, foiling technique is Choosing a board that's right for you with a mask that's right for you. Um, for specifically in our area in Belmont, something with high volume is gonna help. Medium sized mast, a controllable wing. D basically shy away from race wings. That's the big thing with the foils. If it's a beginner, you do not wanna set yourself up on a race setup that is going to be very difficult to learn and it's gonna be a long uphill journey. Yes, it can be done. I'm not saying it can't be, but you wanna give yourself as much um, as an easy progression as possible. Uh, and then with riding, giving yourself a decent amount of wind, giving yourself a kite size that feels comfortable in that wind that you're comfortable with, and starting off slow. You don't need to go into it fast, easing yourself into the speed and keeping weight over your front foot while riding. If you use all of that, it should be a very general guideline into helping you out for getting into the sport of fo uh, kite foiling and make you feel a little bit more accomplished when you get out there and getting more time on the water for the light wind stuff. So I'll be making more videos 
getting more specific on riding and, and more looking at actually how we get up and riding on the foil once I can get out to the water and get more video so you can actually get a good visual of this. But I feel like this is a good video today to give you a good overview of board choice and a little bit of riding technique. Hopefully you like this video. We'll be back on Wednesday with some more kiteboarding fun. And in the meantime, everyone have a great start to your week and happy kiting everyone. You, see you later. Hey everybody, Chip Ripperson here. If you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. That way you'll be notified every time we post new videos like this one. And if you want to see more videos that are already on the channel, be sure to click right here for more of our pro rider interviews, gear reviews, and more vlog posts. Happy kiting everybody, you!